Hello, welcome to AP Physics C, how to calculate the rotational inertia of a uniform rod. This will tackle an infamous question that comes up on the AP test quite frequently, and that is the calculation of the rotational inertia of a uniform thin rod. Now a rod is one of the three shapes that will show up quite a lot in rotation, which are the rod, the cylinder, and the sphere. Now in terms of proving the rotational inertia of a cylinder and sphere, those questions are very unlikely to show up on a test due to the fact that the cylinder's proof is quite easy and the sphere's proof is very, very hard. Now the rod's proof is kind of in between in the sort of Goldilocks zone and that's what we're going to explore today. First, let's go over the qualities of the rod. The rod is a uniform rod, which means that the mass is distributed evenly throughout. The rod has mass capital M and length capital L. Another quality is that it's a thin rod, or in other words, has no cross-sectional area. It only really has length. Now this might be confusing as the visualizations I show will have a cross-sectional area. But just remember this is only for a display and just keep in mind that the actual rod is infinitely thin. Now to begin, we have to establish a method we're going to use to solve this problem. If you remember from the last video, the method to solve rotational inertia for particle mass systems was to add up mr squared of each mass, with it being sigma of mr squared. And in this case for the variables, m was the mass and r is how far away it was from the pivot point. We will be using the same philosophy here. However, since they are not particle masses and instead one big continuous volume, we'll have to cut it down into said particle masses. We cut it into infinitely small slices, all with the same width, and we'll add them up all with integration. So what equation do we use? Well, in this case, we use the calculus definition of moment of inertia, integral of r squared dm. This equation will show up on your AP Physics sheet during the test, and you can use it anytime. r and m are, in this case, the same variables as before, with r being the distance from the pivot and m being mass. You might notice that this is very similar to the sigma mr squared we used in the last video, and you'd be right we're just now using infinitely small slices instead. So now let's cut this rod and look at one of the slices. Look at the length of this slice. It's now an infinitely small version of the big L that we saw before. And so it's gonna be a small version that we call dx. The mass similarly is an infinitely small version of the big mass that we'll call dm. Now this is where the word uniform in uniform rod is actually quite important here. Uniform mass basically means that the mass is the same throughout, and it adds up to the total of m. So that means that the density of the rod is actually the same everywhere. Now if you think about it, if the density wasn't the same everywhere, that means that there would be portions of the rod that are heavier than others, which means it's not uniform. But since it is uniform, the density is the same. This means that the density of this slice will be the same as the density of the rod. After all, we are just cutting a slice out of the rod, which doesn't change the contents inside of it, keeping the density the same. So what is the equation for density? Well, it's mass divided by volume. Now for the rod, we know that it is an infinitely thin rod, meaning that the volume is actually just L, or the length of the rod. So the density of the uniform rod is M divided by L. So the density of the uniform rod is capital M divided by capital L. Now let's look at the slice's density. The density here is instead going to be dm divided by dx using the same logic that we got m divided by l from. Now since we established that the density of this slice is going to be the same as the density of the whole rod, we know that dm over dx will actually equal m over l. Well, why is this important? Well, to establish our integral, we need to evaluate along the length, otherwise known as the integral with respect to x. So r squared dm doesn't help here since dm isn't the length. We have to replace it. So now going back to the equation, we can rearrange it to make dm equals m divided by l times dx. Then replace dm into the integral of r squared dm to get the integral of r squared m divided by l times dx. So in this case, what is r? Well, we know from the previous video that r is the distance from the pivot. Well, for now, let's assume that the pivot is in the middle, just for example. We can make the pivot point the origin of the graph, aka 0, 0, and we can see that the slice's x-coordinate 
will always equal the distance from the pivot, making r equal x in this case. So if we assume that the pivot is at 0, 0, we can replace r with x, giving us the integral of x squared times m divided by l times dx. Now m divided by l are constants. We know what they are, so we can take them out of the integral, leaving us with the classic power rule case of the integral of x squared dx. The antiderivative of that would be 1 over 3 times x cubed, and now we decide the pivot point. Now because we replaced r with x earlier, the pivot point must be the origin. So let's go over what happens when it's in the middle first. First, let's look at the positive end. If the middle is x equals 0, the positive end would have half the rod, meaning that the x-coordinate of the positive end would be x equals l divided by 2. Similarly, the negative end would be x equals negative l divided by 2. So let's put those as the ends of the definite integral. And we get m over l times 1 third x cubed evaluated from l over 2 to negative l over 2. Now for the integral, we get 1 third l over 2 cubed minus 1 third negative l over 2 cubed. This gives us 1 third l cubed divided by 8 plus 1 third l cubed divided by 8. Now this gives the denominator of 24 to each term, and since they have the same de denominator, we get l cubed divided by 24 plus l cubed divided by 24, which equals l cubed divided by 12. Now we multiply this with m over l, and we cancel l once, giving us 1 12th ml squared, exactly what it says on the formula sheet. So now let's do this again when the pivot is at the end. When it's at the end, the positive end's x-coordinate is x equals l, while the other side has x-coordinate of x equals 0. So we evaluate 1 third x cubed from l to 0, which gives us 1 third l cubed minus 1 third 0 cubed. The second cube just equals 0, so we multiply m divided by l with 1 third l cubed, which gives us 1 third ml squared, exactly like the formula she provided. So to recap, first understand that infinite slices, will, no matter how many slices you have, will still have the same density as the uniform rod. So using that relation, you replace dm with dx, replace r with x, evaluate x in the integral, set your endpoints as the ends of the rod in relation to the pivot, and solve it. Once you get some practice in, it really gets quite easy, and it's one of the more fun problems in my opinion. So hopefully this helps. Best of luck with your studies, and bye-bye.